It was in the middle of the night in December. The phone rang and Robert answered. The voice on the other end was frantic. She said, Dad fell, and he has bleeding in his brain. They say he's critical and all the kids are on their way here to the hospital. Robert's sister said she would pay for his airline ticket, and he needed to get there as soon as possible. Arrangements were made. He would fly out the very next day. Robert met his older brother in Chicago, then on to Minneapolis. Upon arriving, the temperature was minus 20 degrees, and the air felt like swallowing ice cubes. They arrived at the hospital and met the whole family in the waiting room. Robert hugged his mom for ten minutes. John and Helen had separated a few years back. Helen was living on her own. But her love for John was on full display with tears and trembling hands. John had become a teddy bear, crying and praying every day. He would walk up and down the hallways of the nursing home, looking for a purpose. John missed Helen so much, but his abuse over the years had driven her away, and now he was left alone with his guilt and broken heart. John had a blockage in his heart, 20% open on one side and 80% blocked on the other. His heart was working overtime, and this was the problem the doctors faced. The doctors could not give him blood thickeners to slow the bleeding in his brain, and if they gave him blood thinners to help his heart, the bleeding in the brain would increase, causing certain death. The family would have a devastating decision to make, and a family meeting was set up with John's doctors. Robert, Helen, and all the siblings stepped into John's IC room. Each of them spoke to John, who was heavily medicated and could not speak, only mutter shallow moans. Robert took his turn with his father. Feeling safe, he bent down and kissed his forehead. His hair smelled sweet. Robert told John he was there and told him that he loved him. John attempted to answer him, but only moved his lips with no words. A tear ran down John's face, and Robert had to stand back and move away from the bed. His heart was breaking. The whole family stood around John's bed. They began to pray with each and every word. John's heart rate would increase, and the monitor got louder and louder. The IC nurse was alerted and ended the prayer service. The meeting with the doctors took place in a boardroom. They explained the serious situation at hand. They could not operate on John's brain without blood thickeners, and that would stop his heart. The doctor said that John would not survive brain or heart surgery. The doctors asked the family to consider letting him go and explained that they were out of options at this point. John was in pain being kept alive with machines and not strong enough to fight this, even if he could. They suggested that John be moved to a hospice unit and disconnect all the machines. They could keep him comfortable with morphine and let him decide when he was ready to pass. After hours of debate, tears, and additional visits to John's room, the family decided to let him go and move forward with the doctor's suggestions. It would put their feelings aside and do what was best for John. The hospital moved him into a temporary hospice room within the same hospital, while the family arranged for his return home to the nursing home hospice facility. Robert could not stay any longer. He had to get back home. There was nothing he could do but wait with the others and watch his father die. The doctors said John should pass peacefully in a few days and Robert's heart was in so much pain. The night before his flight back home, he stayed with some of his siblings in a room next to John's. Robert's final goodbye to his father was in the middle of the night. Robert walked into his room, placed his hand on John's forehead, and said these words, I'll be okay, Dad. Your little buddy will be just fine. It's okay to go and rest. We will take care of mom. Go find your light. Be happy. And I love you. <laughs>